The ancient Egyptian society was very structured and advanced compared to the other societies that existed during that time. They were also the first civilization to produce a government that controlled an entire nation. They worshipped the gods and built temples to do so. The Egyptians had a very distinct and strict caste system, where social mobility was very limited. The rulers of Egypt were called kings until the start of the New Kingdom of Egypt in 1570 BCE when they began to be referred to as pharaohs who could be male or female. However, both kinds of rulers would make pronouncements, laws, and commission projects. The Egyptians also had government officials, scribes, and overseers to help govern the people. The government created laws, taxation, and organized labor, trade, and defense. The ancient Egyptians' social structure was like a pyramid. It went as follows. Pharaohs were at the top as they were considered descendants of God. Government officials were nobles and priests, although only nobles could hold government positions, while the priests were in charge of pleasing the gods. Soldiers fought in the wars and ended social uprisings. The scribes kept record of what was going on in the country. The craftsmen and merchants were the middle class as they bought goods and sold them to the public. The farmers tended and raised the animals. The slaves were at the bottom of the pyramid and were forced to work on building projects. Ancient Egyptian art was functional, but they still kept aesthetics in mind, even when hieroglyphics were written. Art reflected the perfection of the gods, while at the same time serving a practical purpose. In their temples, the statues had the spirit of the god or the deceased, and in the tombs, the paintings showed scenes from one's life on earth, so one's spirit could remember it. The ancient Egyptians were advanced when it came to creating and improving technology. Being that agriculture was the foundation for the economy and government, they focused on aggregation and ox-drawn plows, also using the positions of stars to determine when to harvest and plant crops. They used mathematics for practical uses such as keeping records, designing buildings and machines, writing prescriptions, and calculating taxes. In addition to this, they improved the calculator, made advancements in medicine, and produced and traded many household goods. They also created the toothbrush and toothpaste, as well as the first breath mint. And for what they were most well known for, the Egyptians created humongous pyramids as well as obelisks that are common tourist destination. In the beginning, there was nothing but darkness. Then a primordial hill called Ben Ben rose and on top stood Atta. Eventually, when he realized his loneliness, through magic he made it with a shadow to create Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the god of moisture. The siblings left their father to establish the world. They were gone for so long that when Shu and Tefnut returned to Adam, he shed tears, creating mankind. Being that mankind had nowhere to live, Tefnut and Shu mated and gave birth to Geb, the earth, and Nut, the sky. Nut and Geb became so in love that Shu had to push Nut into the sky and separate them. However, Nut was already pregnant and gave birth to Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys. Adam found that Osiris was a capable leader and declared him king over the earth to rule alongside his sister wife, Isis. The gods all represented one principle of the world. For example, Ra was the sun god and Nut was the goddess of the sky. Though these gods were not described in great detail, they were believed to be benevolent and could be counted on. The gods' forms were usually part animal and part human, which corresponded to their personality. There were also demons, who were believed to be more powerful than humans, but less powerful than gods, and affected the world in supernatural ways. Some demons were Amet, who devoured the hearts of people who were unfit to enter the afterlife. And there was also Apophis, a large snake that battled against Ra. Humans were first created from Amun's tears. They were expected to honor the gods, and they were responsible for maintaining a balance in the natural world. At first, they believed the gods controlled everything that happened in the world. However, this was eventually passed on to the human pharaoh. As the gods and goddesses were responsible for creating life, the humans believed it was important to worship them. The priests helped them do so. Some gods would elevate humans to become gods. For example, the pharaohs were believed to be gods in human form and had absolute power over their subjects. The afterlife was considered a paradise. 
All spirits had to pass through the gate of judgment where they would meet Osiris, the god and chief of the underworld, in the hall of final judgment. Judgment was a two-part process. Part one is standing before 42 divine judges. The Book of the Dead told spirits what to say to each of the judges. Part two is the weighing of the heart. The spirit's heart is weighed to a feather. The feather resembled truth and justice as the heart holds all the actions done by the deceased person. If the heart was heavier, it was fed to Ammon, the devourer, and they weren't permitted to the afterlife. If the heart was lighter, the spirit would go on.